All right, guys, it's your boy, Mr. Extra. Here to do another deck profile. Like I said, I was going to. I'm gonna get. I'm gonna show you guys my my favorite deck that I like to run. I've had a lot of good with it. I've seen the idea from someone else, put my own little spin on it, but all in all, it's very, very good. It's um, it's the uh, live twins and then the unchained twins together. And together, they support each other pretty well. So, we're going to go ahead and get started. So, first thing we're going to elaborate on is we're going to go with the twin package, or the live twins. So, first you want to do is you want to run, or, my bad, what I'm running, live twin Keisha. Now, Keisha's useful. You're going to want to run three of those. She's really useful because what she does is, if you have no monsters on the field, and you put her down... Assuming no one negates her effect, she can search for her sister, Lula, which you're going to want to run three of those as well to benefit this. And what they do is one searches out the other and special summons it to the field, so essentially gives you two monsters straight off the bat, and then you can start working into potentially link climbing or doing a couple different things. My personal preference is... I usually throw one down, then throw the other one down, and then immediately link climb into the extra deck. Make a benefit. What else they do is Keisha, Key, Sakia, I'm going to call her Kia. Kia, when a monster declares an attack on a opponent's one, you gain 500 life points before the, uh, the attack happens, as soon as they declare it. And Lula, she does the same thing, but instead of gaining 500, your opponent loses 500. But... The main main portion of it is for these these girls you need to get one down on the field, get the other. Gives you an opening for extenders, basically. So we're gonna move the twinsies out of the way. So you're gonna run three of those, like I said. Then I also run one of the boss monster of them, which this is the evil twins, the non-extra deck evil twin, he, Shakia, and Lila. And what she does is she can be special summoned from Hannah Graveyard by tributing two Link monsters. Just two Link monsters. It doesn't even have to be the Link versions of these or the Link versions of, say, them. Just two Link monsters. And if this card special summon, you can activate an effect this effect. If your opponent controls three more monster car three more cards, they must send cards to the graveyard so they control two. So, you know, you can kind of um make it work, get a free pop off, etc etc. There's a lot of stuff you can open up with this. Or you can try to play off a second effect, which is why I only run one of these, because I usually just use the extra deck to try to quickly dominate my opponent, link climb, depending on what you want to do. But She's really good to get out there if, say, there's something on 4,000 plus and you need to kill it, but your extra deck isn't strong enough, right? So, her second effect is you can only use the effect of her once per turn when you have Ki, Shikia, and Lula. So, if you basically have the, the smaller versions of these two, so, these two in the grave, then... She gains 2200 attack, 2200 defense, so 44, 44, so something you can throw out there, link climb in, get them in the grave, throw her down the field, swing someone for half their life, essentially, if that's what you're trying to do. That's your spin on it, anyways. But I only run one, mostly because sometimes I can draw under her, and a lot of times she's useful because you can also bring her back from grave. She doesn't have to be in your hand. She can be in the graveyard. You can throw her in the grave early game and then save her for later, basically. It's a very good option. I do that a lot. Throw her out. Save her for later. Discard her the grave off something. Spawn her back later after your opponents forgot that she's been in the graveyard for, like, a few turns. And you need to overcome their big monster or their big 4,000 monster or whichever you want to do. So we're gonna move on to the um, spells and traps for the uh, the live twins. So the spe I don't use a lot of specific spells and traps from them. They have a couple, but the main ones I use that are effective is um, I run live twin home, 
I run two of those. What it does is it lets you discard one card, and then you can special summon one of the twins from your deck. And then after this card resolves, you can't special summon monsters from the extra deck unless they're the evil twin Link versions of it. So, like, her, for example. And there's two of them. There's her, and then there's her. Both awesome cards. I'll elaborate that here in a minute on what they do and how useful they are for this deck. Anyways, so, two of the large one home. I would run three, but it's a half and half for this deck, and Young Chain is the support. The live twins climbs you up into the extra deck, so you can access, you can get access quickly to the Unchain extra deck. I run two Evil Twin Challenge. Now, Evil Twin Challenge is good. There's another trap card that's similar to this as Evil Twin Present, but that involves sacking one of your twins on the field. And then you give them, you give your opponent, you trade monsters with your opponent, and you can take one of their monsters, and you get to pick one of their monsters, and you give them one of your twins in response, basically. So what Evil Twin Challenge does, this is pretty cool, I use this all the time, set it in the back, especially if I'm opening up and I'm trying to link climb into my Evil Twins from the extra deck. I'll set those down, what it does is it targets uh, Keisha, Alula, in your graveyard, targets one of them, and then you can special summon it. It's basically a monster born as long as you can follow up with it immediately after this effect resolves. Link summon one evil twin monster you control as material. Use one one of the monsters you brought back with evil twin challenge as material to link climb into the other ones. And they're they're easy to bring out, so awesome trap card for this archetype or for live twins. I love it, it's pretty good. Alright, so I got one more for you. I used to run three of these, but I'm down to one right now because Half the time, my deck cycles so much with this, I am I managed to uh, only need one. Secret Password. What this thing does is it adds a live twin or evil twin spell trap card from your deck to your hand. If you control a Keisha monster, or control a Lula monster. Well, if you control them both, you can add the um, you can add the evil twin. This card right here from your deck straight to your hand. So you know you can make a play off it. I've done it. Been there. It's nice. It's useful. It's usually good. You just say if you don't have either of the two cards I pointed out before, either of these, which are good extenders. Like this one's really good because, say if you um you threw down the first twin, you threw down the second one. So you threw down Keisha. You use her fight to get Lula, and then you you want to be extra. And you dump down live twin homes right afterwards. Discard for it. Discard on chain monster of the grave. Save it for later. You know, and then um you. Go get another twin, throw it on the field, and then climb your way up as long as you're staying. you just doing the evil twins that turn. Because, um, live twin homes will only let you special summon evil twins for the rest of the turn. So you couldn't, like, climb up into, um, for example, one of your unchained, like, monsters. Alright, so, if I'm not mistaken, that's... All the stuff for the uh, live twin side, which is mostly what I use to link climb up, and then the unchain side is the heavy deck support until I can get to the extra deck and throw that down and try to control the match with it. All right, so we're gonna move ahead and we're gonna go on to the um, unchain monsters. So first off, we're gonna go with uh, unchain twins. Rika, Rika's nice. Rika's real nice. I run two of her, and what I do with her, him. I have no idea, but we're going to call it her. Sounds like a her. Uh, Rika's effect is you can target one card you control, destroy it, and also you cannot special on monsters the rest of the turn except fiend monsters. Well, good thing about this deck is every monster in the deck is fiend besides the base twins, the base Keisha and the base Lula, which are both, um, they're both cybers. So, you can still work off that. And it says, if this card on the field is destroyed by card effect, except by Rika, or by battle, you can special summon one of chain monster from your hand or deck. Except Rika. Now, Rika's awesome because, similar to um, the Unchained Monsters, which most of them are, destroy, get destroyed by card effect, special summon a monster from the deck. Hand, deck, whichever. Certain ones do graveyard, we'll, we'll elaborate that. But Rika's really good for, say, if you get a... Um, an unchained trap card, for example, because most of those are the same thing. If the card's set and someone destroys it by a card effect, say, like, yourself, you can set it, throw Rika down, and then immediately quick effect and pop your trap card. And then go from first turn Rika to first turn Rika, and then something else. 
and then you could essentially link, start link climbing in or set up to do multiple things. But, I mean, this deck works best as a link engine. I don't run synchros or fusions with it, but I'll, you'll see the extra deck here soon. So, two Rika. Next thing you're going to want to run is three Aura. Aura is awesome. What Aura does is, um, Aura can be special summoned from hand by just target and destroying one of your cards. Special summon from your hand, and then for the rest of the turn, you can't special summon cards except... You can't special summon unchained monsters from your hand, hand or deck. Well, actually, no, I got this wrong. If this card is destroyed by card effect, besides Aura, it does the same thing as Rika. It searches. And then um, when you use its effect to put it on the field, you can't special summon for the rest of the turn unless they're fiend monsters, if that makes any sense for you. It says you can target one face up card, target one card you control, you cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except fiend monsters. If you pop them out that way. But it's good, it's free. I mean, again, you can throw down an Unchained Trap card, have Aura in your hand, pop the Trap card, special summon Aura, Trap card goes off, search for your deck for an Unchained Monster, any of them, any of them, and there's a couple of them too, a couple nice ones too, but Aura is really nice, especially if you uh, first turn Rika, and then say you throw down two Unchained Trap cards, and you got Rika, okay, Quick Effect Trap card, and there's a special summon. Aura's in your hand, use Aura's effect, pop the other Unchain Trap card, there's no special summon. Guess what, you just got four monsters on the first turn, and then you're pretty much set up to do whatever you want, assuming you're going first and your opponent hasn't sat down the back row to potentially try to cancel you out and negate you. Alright, so, two Rika, three Aura. We're going to move on to another one that I really like, Sarama. Sarama's awesome too, I'll explain what she does. I run two of her... She targets an on-chain card in your graveyard, except her, and set it on the field. Then, destroy one card you control. If this card on the field is destroyed by card effect, except her, or by battle, you can special an on-chain monster from your hand or deck. So basically what you can do is you can um, throw her down, grab something from the grave that's on-chain, it gets set, it says on-chain card, so it can be a trap card too. It could be a spell card, it doesn't matter, it just says on-chain card. So you can make a couple different options off of it. Typically, I use it to grab another monster or to try to pull a trap card back from the grave to the field so I can immediately try to set it off. So you, you could use her effect, grab a trap card, put it back, and then her second effect goes off, which is then destroy one card you control. So you can go bam, bam, another special summon. There you go. You see where this is going. It's a really, um, it's a really fun fun deck to work with here as long as because if they can't stop the special summons then they're going to get swarmed so a lot of negates they got to do but a lot of the times when you negate something you negate and destroy it or you just destroy it instead which destroying these cards with card effects same deal also you only use their effects once per turn or one of each effect once per turn depending on what happens so say you can dark hole the field or terrain tribute the field or whatever all that stuff would benefit you just as much, actually. I can't tell you how many times I've played with this deck, and someone's like, oh, okay. And then uh, I have, like, a Sarama, and Aura, and a Rika face down, since we just elaborated those. And then they flip out parental tribute after summoning something. And I'm just like, thanks. That's three special summons. You just helped me out more than yourself, probably. So, two Saramas. I would run a third one, but I try to keep a deck at 40. And losing one Sarama, it doesn't really hurt nothing as long as you're running three Aura. Alright, we're going to go to the um, one of the Unchained standard deck boss monsters. Um, Abominable Unchained Soul. Another really good card. I run three. Because he's very easy to get out, especially with all the effects. That these other ones do, Rika, Aura, and Sarama. They all do the same deal. You can... Essentially set them off or get them set off and throw him down the field. Now what he does is when he special summon, once per turn, if a card you control is destroyed by battle card effect, you can special summon this card from your hand. If this card is special summon, you can discard one card and then destroy one card in the field. Once per turn during the end phase of this card's in the graveyard, because it was destroyed by destroyed on the field and sent there this turn, you can special summon it back. So basically, say if they go okay, I kill it, it goes to grave. Cool. It went to grave. 
In phase, back again. Guess what? They killed again. Guess what? It's going to the deck. Cool. Alright, it went to the deck. So, then that's when you just take one of your, any of your Unchained Monsters, actually, and then just reset it off, and guess what? Boom. Back on the field again. Or back to your hand, or whichever. But, you see what I'm saying? And the fact that he goes from grave, like, okay, death, grave. Comes back in end phase. Okay, he dies again, goes back to deck, gets recycled. He recycles himself. It's an awesome card, he's really good. Especially if you can get him out there, and then you get that free target destroy him. As long as you, um, you have a card in your hand to discard. Which, I mean, you're most likely going to. So, three or three of the Unbombable Unchained Soul. Very nice card. We're going to go to our last um, standard Unchained Monster I got for you. Unchained Soul Disaster. Another awesome card. It can be brought out the same way as this guy. Set one of them off by being destroyed by a card effect or destroying each other or etc, etc. So I run two of him. You could probably just get away running one, but you know, if you're going to run the one, you might as well pick up a third Sarama or a third Rika. Personally, I'd probably pick up a third Rika. Only because that quick effect is nice. It's very nice because you can use it just off your other monsters and set it all off. So what Unchained Soul of Disaster does is gains 300 attack for each Unchained monster card in your graveyard. You can only use this effect once per turn. You can target one face up monster your opponent controls immediately after this effect resolves. Link summon one Dark Link monster using only this card you control and the opponent's monster's material. So this is awesome because you can um you can get him special summon in the field and then immediately fire off that effect and then go, Alright, guess what boys, we're linking. Unless you can stop it, we're gonna link into something. We're gonna link into something. And as long as he's involved in it and and your opponent gives you a monster, there's like a ninety percent chance you're gonna you're gonna grab one of these uh nice uh unchained soul monsters, like Unchained Soul of English, for example, which we'll elaborate him in a minute. So, his second effect is if this card is destroyed by battle card effect, you can target one unchained monster in your graveyard and special summon it. So, yeah, you get it. See where this is going. So Yeah. We're gonna get those out the way real quick. Alright, so we're gonna elaborate the uh, unchained spells and traps that I use. Alright, one, Wailing of the Unchained Soul. What this does is if a Link Monster, if a Link Summon, Unchained Link Monster, if you Link Summon, Unchained Monster, you can target one card in the field and destroy it. This set card is destroyed by card effect, you can special summon one Unchained Monster from your deck. So, same thing as the monsters, same deal. All the Unchained cards do this. This is why they're awesome, because you can set them off or you can let your opponent set them off. You can put them down as bait and let them off it with a trap card in effect, and it will still work in your favor nine times out of ten, unless they use like a Joy's Blossom or whatever. Whichever way you want to go about this. But, it gives you a potential play to make, or to throw down a potential extender. However you want to do it. But I only run one of those. I feel like one's only needed because you throw down all your uh, Unchained Boss monsters from the extra deck, and then you have Wailing of the Unchained Souls on the field. You can pretty much just proxy set off a bunch of stuff and then just start targeting and destroying their entire field, depending on how you want to go about this. So just one of these. That's what I run anyways. You don't. You can run more. Your choice. I just wanted to run the one for this guy. All right, next is Escape of the Unchained. I run two of these. This is another awesome card. What it does is it targets one Unchained monster you control and one card in the field. Destroy both. So, you can say, like, have Sarama down, right? And then have this face down. And then say, if they go in for attacking, flip this over, pop your Sarama, and then pop something else on their side of the field. Well, guess what? They just lost something. Their attack missed. And you just got a free special summon out of it, too, unless they choose to negate that, or if they choose to negate Escape of the Unchained. Really, whichever. A trick to get past Unchained monsters is you just have to kill them all by battle, basically. But, nowadays, that's actually kind of hard to do with the amount of back row that people always use and how current in the meta trap cards are, which I've always been a trap-heavy person myself. But, you see where I'm going with this. Like, most of the, nowadays, people like to just destroy sub effects, swing directly, do what they can, you know? So I run two of those. 
And then the last one I, that I run for unchain trap cards and spell cards is Abominable Chain, Chamber of the Unchained. Now this is very similar to that, Escape, Escape of the Unchained, but the only difference this does is the effect's the same when it gets destroyed and when it's set. But, special summon an Unchained monster from your hand or graveyard. So, it's a potential fetch, a potential monster reborn. Make it how you want it, you know. But I run two of those. It's nice. It's very useful. I originally had an order in for another one of these, another Escape the Unchained, but I don't know. I guess the person decided not to send the whole thing, and I wind up having to get a refund. It was the whole thing. But that's not what we're here to talk about, obviously. So we're going to set that over there, and then we're going to go to my uh, the uh, spells and traps I use. Oh, by the way, I need to, I need to mention I do use hand traps. For this deck, anyways. I don't own a lot of them, so... I use one Joy Spring. You know what it does. Most people do. It's useful for a situation, but if you don't know... Add a card from your deck to hand, it'll negate it. Especially someone from the deck, it'll negate that. Send a card from the deck to the graveyard, it'll negate that as well. So I run one of those, and I run two Ghost Ogre. I don't want to run too many hand traps, because then they just start clogging the hand, and then... I mean, you can draw a whole handful of hand traps, and then not be able to do anything. I don't want to be put in that situation I had before where I used to run more than just three. Where I used to run a couple Ghost Ogres, Joyce Blossom, and then two other ones like Skullmeister and everything like that. I don't own a DD Crow. It would be nice to have that. Ghost Ogre, most people know what it does. I'll explain it though. When a monster on the field activates its effect, or a spell or trap card that is already face up on the field activates its effect, you can quick effect, send this card to the graveyard, and then destroy that card in the field. It's an okay, it's an okay hand trap. I mostly use it to get rid of monsters that set up their effects or like field zone cards like, I don't know, Mountain of the Bound, for example. Mountain of the Bound Creator. It's the, my buddy runs a gimmick deck and I've been using it a lot to cancel that out as soon as he goes to activate it. So just three hand traps for this deck. Now, miscellaneous cards, meaning like your, your random good staples or the, uh, the stuff that you just like to run in most decks, most people do. So, okay, so here's what I got. Um, I run two Compulses. Compulse is good just to pop something back into the hand, just to potentially stop something. It's got to be a monster, though. I run one Magic Cylinders because, I mean, it's Magic Cylinders, man. I've, I've won duels. I've just sitting this in a back row and getting them real low, and then they go to swing and they try to finish you off just to get Magic Cylinders, and you won off it. I've won off that plenty of times. Then I run two Mirror Forces. I run Storming Mirror Force and Mirror Force. Standard is exactly what it usually does. Destroys all opponents' attack position monsters. The other one returns all, them all to the hand. I used to run Drowning, but Drowning requires a direct attack. These two are about the best two that I like to run, just because one's I like the OG Mirror Force. It's cool. I like the art. And then Storming Mirror Force will kick everything back to the hand, depending on how the deck runs. That might screw them, or it might not screw them, but regardless, it gets it all, it gets everything off the field if you're using it on a wide, wide attack that's coming your way. I run one bombless trap hole for the banish. I run one solemn strike because I only own three, so I kind of have them spread out. But the one fifteen hundred cheapest solemn card to use, very useful when they want to waste their time. Doing all these special summons, just throw a big beefy monster that probably doesn't have protection, and you just saw him strike it at the end. I run one Trinal Tribute, because Trinal Tribute and the Unchained Monsters, awesome. Blow up your field, get a bunch of special summons, and they don't get anything back, most likely. And then I run one Dark Briar to stop, just like your extra stuff. Just your random extra stuff you don't feel like dealing with. Let's see, um, I also run a Crackdown as well. These are your your miscellaneous. Crackdown's a good card. I feel like it's overlooked. It's pretty much pretty much a free snatch and steal, you know? Just like, give me your monster. Thanks. Now I'm going to use it for whatever. Yeah, I'm going to link out with it, or I'm going to sack it, or whichever you feel like doing with it. Alright, my spell cards. I don't use a whole lot of spell cards in this. This is a very trap-heavy deck. I use an MST like a cultured person would. MST is MST. It's Oldie but a goodie. I use one Monster Reborn as well for Monster Reborn purposes. Free special summon, why not? I ride Geki because it's useful. It's basically a lightning vortex, but 
without the, uh, without the discard and all monsters instead all face up. And we're on a dark hole, which dark hole is off the ban list now. So I'm pretty sure you can have it for three. I don't know. I need to check it, but I'm I'm only running one on this. Pile duality just to get the nice tasty uh, look at the top three and pick something, which this almost always benefits me. And then my favorite card. I want I run one field zone card. I run Cyanet Universe. Now with Cyanet Universe, that makes it pretty cool. Is all link monsters you control gain 300. So there's a there's a boost and this is a link deck. So this this plays out pretty well. Once per turn, you can target one monster in the graveyard. Shuffle it into your deck. If this card on the field is destroyed by a card effect, send all monsters in the extra zone to the graveyard. All monsters in the extra zone to the graveyard. Now, remember that phrase. Say if your opponent's running extra zone monsters too, or link, link monsters, link zone monsters. Well, guess what? You can easily wait till you don't have a link monster, MST that, and I'll destroy theirs. That's at least my take on it. That's, I'm pretty sure that's what that means. Now, we're going to go to the last portion of what I got for you today for this deck profile. I would be like most people and have a bunch of edits and everything for the video, a bunch of little animations and everything, but I'm, I'm just getting started, so, you know, do time, do time. Alright, so what I got for you today is... First, we're going to start off with Evil Twin Lula. It is the uh, Link version for Standard Lula. I run three of her. She's useful. She is awesome, actually. You just use the t typically what you want to do is get a Keisha or Lula by yourself on the field. Get that special summon. Special summon the other one. Link into one of these bad boys real quick. And then work on your link climb. I'll elaborate actually. I'll give you an example. So, her effect, what she does is she can quick effect another one to the field from the grave. Another evil Lula can quick effect a Keisha, whether it's the evil Keisha or the standard one, back to set off the effect when they're both on the field. Because when one's on the field by itself, cool, if it quick effects the other one. The one that gets special summon will get a secondary effect. Lula's is, say if uh, Keisha is on the field, and then she quick effects Lula from grave to field, or you have Keisha on the field first, and then you link summon Lula, she can target and destroy something on your opponent's side of the field. Actually, she can target and destroy anything on the field, one thing. So say you could do that, and then off one of your, like, when you're on chain monsters as well, you try to... Pull out a better one, pop your own monster in effect, set off a reaction, pop one of your own chain trap cards, set off a reaction, and make a climb, chain into it. I only run one of her right now, because I only own one, and she's expensive. So, when I say that this is very budget, it's a very budget deck, I didn't pay a lot of money for any of this shit. Most of the stuff I pulled myself. But, essentially what you do... I'm going to explain real quick before I get to the rest of my uh, link cards. So, let me find my twins real quick. Alright, so, what you would do, the most effective thing I've seen for this, and that I've done myself, is say, you take Lula, they're on the field. Guess what? You have no monsters, they have no response to the effect, now you special summon the other one. Well, guess what? They haven't done nothing yet. You're going to link two. You're going to link two out, and then typically, if it's first turn, if I'm going first... I want an extra card. So what you do is you um, you link to and uh, Keisha, throw her down. You would use her quick effect, the quick effect Lula, from grave to field. And then guess what? You're gonna link them two out. You would link these two out for her, evil Lula. And then you would quick effect evil Keisha, which they can only use her effect once per turn. But if you notice, how I did. I start out Keisha, quick effect. And quick effect, Lula. Use Keisha's effect to get Lula out, and then use Lula's effect to pull Keisha from grave. And then her effect is when she's quick effect to the field. After you, um, you have a twin. You have another one. You get to draw a card. Sometimes that benefits very early in. So, wanted to get that explained real quick. I also so 
my other random, because I run a couple of random like monsters just to try to try to get the kill across if I need to. I run one, zero, Orboros, because he's a link four, which yeah, two effect monsters, but if you take two link two rating cards like these two, which are they're link two rating, you can use these two and bam, get him out. And then his effect summarizes um, all zones he points to. If you special summon into that zone, after he's already pointing to it, he blinks the field. Everything gets banished, and then, and that's the whole field, background monsters, everything. And then on the end phase, he comes back and he gains 200 points for every card that's banished in either person's banished pile. So, he's something good to throw out there, just to be a pain, be annoying. Now, Borosaur Dragon, you can't get it across, and you need a little oomph to just try to get it out of the way. He's a good good play for him. He requires three monsters, though, so, you know, two twins, or, um, he's a Link 4 rating, so you could go the two twins, and that would be enough there, but he requires three, so you can go both people twins, and then one of your own chain monsters, for example. And he's cool because he's got a quick effect to target one monster, change it in defense, and then he can make a second attack. And then your opponent cannot activate cards or effects in response to his effect activation. He can declare attack on a face-up monster. You activate this effect till the end of the turn. He gains attack equal to half. So, very useful. Alright, so. I got mm, two more, two or three more to go through. And then I can get to my, my favorite portion of my Link Monsters, which are the Unchain. So, we're going to go with... Um, I run one Deco Talker, because Deco Talker is pretty nice. Easy to get out. Link rating three, but... Two of the twin, two of the evil twins would get him out too. Gains 500 for each card he's pointing at, and then he can quick effect, and then tribute one monster. This card points to negate the activation of the effect that targets one of my monsters and destroy the card. So something small negates effects if you have the material for it. You know, keep it fed and whatnot. And then I run a darkness metal, the dragon of dark steel. He's a Link 4, so I can pull him out the two twins, the two evil twins. They have to be the same type and same attribute, which they both are. And he can target one monster your opponent. He can target one of your monsters that is banished or in your grave or special summon it into the zone this points to in defense position, but its effects are negated. Also, you cannot special summon Link monsters for the rest of the turn. The, special, the summon monster is placed on the bottom of the deck when it leaves the field. You can only use it once per turn. So, essentially, what you can do with this use it to get a special summon back and then get rid of it for like a link summon or something and then it's going to go right back into the deck it gets cycled back in it's, it's a nice little extra I threw in there just cause it's pretty useful now I'm going to show you my favorite link card that I'm, I use that's not part of the archetype I like to use underworld goddess because one of my main concerns I run into a lot is dragoon most people don't like Dragon. So, I use Underworld Goddess. She's a Link 5. She requires 4 monsters. But, what she does is she can target one of your, she, you can use one of your opponent's monsters as fodder to get her out. So, and I've done this before too where I put all the stuff down and then I use their Dragon too. Doesn't target, it's a sack. It's a sack for a Link Summon. He can't negate it. The monster's not even in the field yet for him to try to negate it either. And then what she does is she um, she can negate the effects of all face of monsters your opponent currently controls. The Link Summon monster card is unaffected by your opponent's activated effects unless they target her. Once per turn, if, they have, if your opponent tries to special summon from the grave, you can quick effect and negate the activation. Another really cool card. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and finish up here. Alright, so, next one is your boss monster. Your best monster, you're going to run your extra deck for this. Unchained Abomination. Now, what this does, this is a very spicy card, and you can use the twins to get them out. It requires two monsters, including the Link monster. And then he's a rating of four, the twins are two, so again, the twin engine works really well of getting these bigger boys out, because you only need to Link climb into the two twins, and then you can first turn throw him down on the field if you want, but usually that's... A, an early play, unless they just don't set anything down. Now this card is awesome because what it does is if a card is destroyed by a card effect, except on chain abomination, 
Or except, well, during the damage step. Target one card in the field, destroy it. When another monster is destroyed by battle, guess what? Target one card in the field, destroy it. During your end phase, target one card in the field, destroy it. That's three destroys per turn if you use it correctly. It might add, you can destroy your own cards with his effect too. So say you you want to off your like your back row real quick or a couple of your monsters to get better ones out, you can. I run two of this bad boy though. He's really good, very useful. Now let me grab the other two. Now I brought this guy up earlier, but I'm gonna go ahead and bring him up and elaborate. Soul Unchanged Soul of Anguish, very good card. I run two of him as well. His effect. You need an Unchained Soul monster, so Unchained Soul Disaster or Abominable Unchained Soul would work as well. Now what he does is, you can target one face-up monster your opponent controls immediately after this activation resolves. Link summon one dark monster except him by using the, the opponent's monster and this card's material. And if he's destroyed by a battle card effect, you can target a fiend monster in the graveyard except him and add it to your hand. So basically he comes down, right after he comes down, you can... You can take one of your opponent's monsters and use it as a link fodder to get it off the field real quick. Take their big monster go, alright, Unchained Soul Anguish, we're going to link out real quick. Guess what? Thanks, your monster's gone unless you're stopping this. 50-50. But, take the chance, half the time, you're going to take their monster with you. And my last last thing I want to go over, Unchained Soul of Rage. This is your best, smaller, Unchained monster for the link deck well for your um, link extra deck so what he does i run two of him he requires unchained soul monster as well so abominable soul abominable unchained soul unchained soul disaster that's the only way uh during your opponent's main phase you can quick effect you can target one face of special monster your opponent controls immediately after this effect resolves link summon one link monster except unchained soul rage by using only that opponent's monster and the card you control as material so you can throw it down, wait for them to throw down something beefy, and then quick effect it and force the Link Summon on their turn. This card in the field is destroyed by battle or card effect. You can target one Fiend Monster in your graveyard, accept him, and add it to your hand. So if you want to be extra spicy about it, you can throw him down, wait, and then assuming they throw something down, or a special summon, you can quick effect, get rid of that, say if they throw down Link Monster, you guess what, you can quick effect target it, and then they're going to link out, and then you're going to get yourself an Unchained Abominable Soul. Or an Unchained Abomination. So, basically, what I figured out about this archetype is it's all about destroying by card effects, stealing their monsters, using their monsters, etc., etc. It's, um, it's a very fun deck to play. I like it personally. And originally this started out as a live twin deck, and... Yeah, here we are. I had to make it faster. Light twins by themselves were okay, but they didn't have they didn't have anything to support the main deck. So you get where I'm going with this. But that's all I got for you. I'm gonna have more deck profiles later this week. I have an Odiac deck profile I want to go over, or I want to set up and do. I already have the deck made. It's just a matter of doing it, and then a couple other decks that I I want to elaborate. But we'll get more to that later.